Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. As you can see, we have you on camera killing the diplomat. On camera in front of hundreds of people. And millions more watching online. What? No, no, those guys don't even look like us. Where's the trust? We've been working for the CIA for 15 years now. And that's why you're not in handcuffs right now, you son of a bitch. Yeah, you're almost mediocre agents. Figured we'd give you the benefit of the doubt. We just want some answers, dirtbag. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. This sounds oddly familiar. You want answers? I want the truth! Like, really familiar. You can't handle the truth! Oh, come on! You okay there, Dan? That the, the, the thing they just said, that whole back and forth. Drawing blanks there, buddy. Is that from like a song or something? A, a movie, I think? I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Movie? <laughs> you don't watch movies. D- did you order the code red? The Mountain Dew code red? Oh yeah, right over here, Agent Ricky! Oh, for freak's sake. Now! Yo, why are you this? Oh! Alright, they're out. Now we need to get out of here. Uh, uh, in a minute, I, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of tired. Yeah, me, me too. Ooh. Yeah, I can sit down for a bit. So what should we do now? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. You have to understand, that thing is out there. Ronald Lacey and Buckaroo Banzai can't be reasoned with. Plus the parents are dead. Clancy Brown to Highlander can't be bargained with. Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat doesn't feel pity, just like Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa to The Art of War doesn't feel remorse. Or Michael Bean in Aliens doesn't feel fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Get down. Until you take Jeanette Goldstein to Terminator 2. Judgment Day is coming to firepit.podbean.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh make their own fate and face the 90s summer blockbuster Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's the vacation determination every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Hasta la vista, baby. See, this is better than LaCroix because at least with White Claw, if you drink enough of them, you forget you're drinking really nasty flavored water. Gross. I'm I'm with Dan on this one. Yeah, gross. I'm not disagreeing. It's like I think somebody put watermelon in there at one point. I think I think it's just you drinking uh, the static on the television while someone describes to you what a watermelon tastes like. That think... is the most accurate description of what I just had a drink of. Direct your hate to Dan at curtain call entertainment inc at gmail dot com. And on that note, good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the fire pit. I'm Josh, codename Nithix, and uh, we welcome you back to our 74th episode, and we've got, well, <laughs> we've, we've got a movie for you tonight, but good, <laughs> bad, or something in the middle, it's another stop on our vacation to Termination, where we've hopped dimensions, lobbed off some heads, and defended Earthrealm. Now, as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on over to this one. Now, to give us an idea of who we're watching... And what we're watching tonight, I'm going to go pass the secret missive over to Dan. Thank you, Josh. Dan here, codename not again. And last time we saw Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa threaten the souls of Christopher Lambert and friends in 1995's Mortal Kombat. Tonight, we'll follow the man in the high castle to 2000's The Art of War. Some kind of action, spy, drama, thriller, uh, I don't know. We need to Michael Bean. So, but to give us a rundown on the film and maybe a bit of meta, uh, I will give you all to Tom. Thank you, Dan. Tom here. Code name. Tom, edit that out. (laughs) And as mentioned tonight, we're watching The Art of War, 
starring Wesley Snipes, Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa, Ann Archer, Donald Sutherland, and Michael Bean. An action crime thriller as only the early 2000s can produce. Whether that's a good thing or not remains to be seen. What we can see is what this was like when it was released. Its release date is August 25th, 2000. This movie has a running time of 117 minutes. It has a budget of $60 million and a box office of a rousing $40.4 million. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, no, save that one for the Rotten Tomatoes and the IMDb. Because oh, okay. <laughs> if you thought the box office was great, this stands on Rotten Tomato at a whopping 16% Oof. with an audience of 35% and an IMDb of 5.7 out of 10. Now, Dan. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> yes. God. Yes. That, if ever. Is this the lowest movie we've watched? It might be. I definitely think this beats out everything else we've seen so far and we've seen some even uh tango and cash was at least in the higher numbers like in the 40s or 50s i thought yeah yeah i mean even uh, Pathfinder. Pathfind- pathfinder is a 10 percent okay. wow okay wow so not the lowest but it's it's, it's, a, it's, it's in, a contender <laughs> yeah yeah it's a contender for sure will it go oh. the distance like rocky though i don't know Will we last the distance against this film? We're going to find out. Um, It'll help to know what we're getting into with a little meta. You ready for some meta, guys? You know the answer to this, Tom. If we have to. I can hear you chomping at the bit for that sweet, sweet meta, so I won't keep you in suspense any longer. The Art of War tagline. Do you know who your enemy is? I'm asking you guys a question. Do you know who is your it enemy this is? this movie? I think it's this movie. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's this movie. You're probably not wrong. Summary. Shaw, played by Wesley Snipes, is an operative for the United Nations covert dirty trick squad using espionage and quasi-ethical tactics to secure peace and cooperation. When a shipping container full of dead Vietnamese refugees turns up on the docks and China's ambassador is gunned down at a diner celebrating a new trade agreement with China and the U.S., Shaw is framed for the murder and must evade the FBI and triad gangsters to find out what is really going on. Um, This film... Despite its name coming from the ancient Chinese text by Sung Tzu, The Art of War, uh, this does not seem to be inspired by or related in any way to that actual book. Behind the camera, we clearly have a theme going on with this entire journey of movies created by people who shouldn't be making films, yet are being allowed to make films. This was produced by a lot of people. A few of them uh, made some things of worth like Garden State, but the big two were Nicholas Clermont and Ron Wan. Um, Nicholas at least produced Highlander TV series and then The Caveman's Valentine, uh, whereas Ron Yan did nothing in America and nothing worth mentioning. I mean, this film did have involvement from China and he was a Chinese producer. So I guess on paper that makes sense. And maybe his, his movies had were hits in China. But this film was written by Wayne Beach and Simon Barry. Wayne came up with the story and Simon was brought in later to fix it or make it worse we don't know yet wayne did a bunch of junk thriller films all within the six star range on imdb he did murder at 1600 before this which was another wesley snipes film after this he did slow burn with ll cool j and ray liotta uh whereas simon again he took over the writing uh this was his first film and he would go on to about the same level six star level tv series Continuum and Warrior Nun, if that's any indication of the style of writing we're about to watch. And directing this film is Christian Dugois, action thriller director. He's since done Hitler, The Rise of Evil, 
uh, Boot Camp with Eliza Kunis, and Human Trafficking, uh, which is a miniseries with Donald Sutherland. But before this, he was known for Screamers, Scanners 2 and 3, and Livewire, all four to six star films. So we're getting quality people behind the camera, guys. And in front of the camera, we've got a few people um, here. In particular, I'm going to focus on Wesley Snipes, Michael Bean, and Donald Sutherland. Wesley Snipes is our protagonist playing Neil Shaw. He was the big name actor that drew you to the seats. I tentatively say he's kind of a character style actor. Those that don't know his types of movies. After this movie, he's since done about three years for tax evasion. And then he did Expendables 3. But before this film, he did Major League, Demolition Men, White Men Can't Jump, Blade. So like I said, he was the guy you wanted to have in your movie to bring that big blockbuster name recognition. As your antagonist, maybe sidekick, we have Michael Bean playing Robert Bly, the kind of guy who will give you a steady performance so long as you give him a steady paycheck. Um, he's since done The Mandalorian and Clock Stoppers. Um, before this, he was Kyle Reese in Terminator and also Corporal Hicks in Aliens. He was also in The Rock. I keep forgetting that he was in The Rock and The Abyss. Like I said, not really an A-plus actor, but solid B-plus guy. And finally, the legend himself, Donald Sutherland as Douglas Thomas, your performance character actor with more credentials than I can name. In these sorts of films, he is your actor you bring in to at least elevate some of the weaker actors and uh, help some of the more cookie cutter scenes and dialogue. Uh, he was President Snow in The Hunger Games. He's also been in Ad Astra and Beer Fest. I forgot he was in Beer Fest, but before this, uh, he was in Animal House. He was Hawkeye Pierce in MASH. He was also in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Uh, so that's who we have going on behind the scenes and what's going on behind the scenes with making of this film. But now I wonder if there's any trivia behind this film. Dan, do we have any trivia? But actually, no. No, I, scratch that, Dan. I'm jumping ahead. I'm excited to hear trivia behind this movie. Josh, what was the box office like for this movie? Oh, thank God I have more time to find something. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, The Art of War, uh, as we said earlier, came out August 25th, 2000. So we're getting close to its 21st anniversary that nobody cares about. But um, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of banners out there about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely no like, we've got to get together and watch The Art of War anniversary. <laughs> but uh, domestically, I, I want to say this up front. Domestically, this movie made $30 million. Internationally, it made 10. So it's opening weekend. It premiered at number two. It pulled in $10.4 million its opening weekend. So more than one third of its total domestic gross. Do you guys care to take a whack at the epic movie that came in at number one that weekend? August 25th, 2000. Um, I think Death Race 2000 came out in 2000. Yeah, but I don't think that was the epic movie. It uh, wasn't Gladiator, was it? You guys will kick yourselves. Don't tell me yet. I'm trying to guess it. Kick yeah, you boxing? kick yourselves when you figure it's out. Not kick I tell you what it was it an is. 80. Don't tell me yet. I may or may not be hinting at this. Oh, you're hinting strongly. You are <laughs> at practically dropping it in our laps. I was uh, definitely tossing it up there. Kick tosser. Toss kick, kick tosser. tosser. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? This isn't an episode of Community, Tom. <laughs> You're thinking Kick Puncher, Josh. Yes. Is it Kick Puncher? It, it, there's no such movie. What are you talking about? Why are you like this? Uh, <laughs> uh, it came in... Uh, oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God. I know this because I was looking it up for trivia. I know this. I know this. Uh, 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 it's a movie that fans serve it. Bring it on. Bring it on. It's got to be Bring It On, right? The cheerleader movie? It was Bring It On. Yes! Oh my <laughs> god, I forgot all about that of course, film. Of course, now I have even less material for my trivia. <laughs> it's okay. What's fun about that, though, is Bring It On came out in almost 300 theaters less, but made almost twice as much money per theater. Bring It On made $17 million that weekend. I mean, okay, look, I know that this movie's got 
Wesley Snipes in it. But in all fairness, Bring It On has a scene with both Kirsten Dunst and Eliza Dushku in their underwear. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't even know what the plot is of that movie other than cheerleaders, but still, who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in 2000, yes. But uh, other than that, this weekend wasn't terrible? Question mark? We had uh, Bring It On at number one, The Art of War at number two. At number three, The Cell. Was that the one with Jennifer Lopez? Yes, that's the one where she's like a killer that goes into like a mindscape of the other. Or no, she's not the killer. She's a cop going into like the killer's mind or something like that. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. But uh, it's funny you mentioned Donald Sutherland is in this one because he was also in Space Cowboys, which was on its fourth week of release at number four. That's right. Yeah, I almost mentioned that film when I was uh, bringing up his pedigree of films. I like that movie. It's a good one. I hope we can get to it someday. But at number five was the original Kings of Comedy um, on its second week of release. Um, other notables was uh, The Replacements. That was the Keanu Reeves football movie. At number seven, um, Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. I hope we don't get to that movie someday. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Bacon was on the box o- or in the box office at, with Hollow Man at number 12. It was on its fourth week of release. X-Men was at number 15 on its seventh week of release. The Patriot was on its ninth week of release. So it was overall an interesting weekend. Um, mm-hmm. Not a lot in there, but a lot of recognizable films. Very 2000s films, I would describe these. Yeah, like Coyote Ugly was in there. The perfect I said The Perfect Storm. Uh, scary Movie, the first one, not the 30th. Gladiator was in theaters at this time, but it was on its 17th week of release. Mm-hmm. I really don't have much more to say about it than that. Um it didn't do great in the box office. Seriously, it went from like it's number two in the box office to number four to seven. And then it basically dropped all the way to 62 in a matter of like a month and a half. It was not very well received. And it definitely did not stay in the box office for very, very long. So really, there's not a lot to discuss about this one. So um, that's all I've got for the box office numbers. Dan, do you want to see if you can have the shortest segment with the trivia this month? Yeah, I blew my load with the uh, bring it on thing. <laughs> it's like, that's all I had. <laughs> That's all I had. Honestly, I don't have, there really isn't much. I mean, IMDb's trivia page is like really nothing except for, you know, Jet Li was supposed to be in this film. That's pretty much it. A couple of other like production snafus, like uh, there's a scene where Wesley's character gets on a red bike and rides off. The camera cranes down to a newspaper and um, the pages flip in the wind. And I guess during when that scene was shot, right as the camera panned down to that newspaper, the stunt man that was riding the bike crashed it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and the, the motorcycle was like a very expensive motorcycle called an MV Augusta F4 that had been carefully transported from Virginia and only 20 some had been made. And oopsie. So it, like, maybe that's why this movie cost $60 million. I don't know. Maybe $59 million was in that bike. I don't know. The only other like little bits of trivia I've got are just, I mean, uh, it's stuff that you and Tom already mentioned in the meta. This movie got beat by a cheerleader film. And Tom mentioned some of the actors and actresses in it. Like this was one of Wesley Snipes' last like quote unquote big movies before he um, he made Blade 3 and then got in trouble with Uncle Sam. I don't know which one's worse. Um, <laughs> really don't. Gun to your head. Do you want to be in Blade 3 or do you want to owe money to the government? But one interesting thing I found, and this is the only interesting thing I found, is this movie actually has sequels. It's got two of them. <laughs> Amazing. It's a trilogy. Anyways. Um, Why? You're about to find out. Anyways, Wesley Snipes was unable to make a sequel due to his commitment to the Blade series. Because I think after this film, he goes and makes Blade 2, Blade 3. And he made a couple of other films before he got in trouble with the tax guys. Then he had tax troubles. So he's unavailable to make a sequel. So the producers decide to revive the series as a vehicle, as a movie series for rapper Treach. And they saw, shot a sequel in 2006 that was supposed to be direct video. Only Snipes returns to the U.S. after serving his time for tax evasion. He contacts the producers about making a sequel because he still owes money to the, <laughs> tax, to the taxes. He contacts the producers about finally making a sequel to a film that was already in post-production. So they film a sequel with Wesley Snipes. And that movie comes out in 2006. And Treach is sequel. The rapper Treach is actually playing the same character as Wesley Snipes. <laughs> 
So Treach's your sequel is therefore put on the shelf and they don't do anything with it for a whole year. And they make an official Art of War 2 with Wesley Snipes. And then they turn the Treach movie into the Art of War 3. Um, I'll give you three requests as to why there's not an Art of War 4. Treach was unavailable for tax evasion. That's one. <laughs> Because the Art of War 3 was a cinematic masterpiece, and then uh, it was so good they decided never to make sequels to it again like they did with yeah, that. consensus Future. is that the series did peak at the third one, and they probably should just stop while they're still ahead. So, <laughs> uh, but honestly, that was the, like, the most interesting thing I found, is that they technically filmed the sequels out of order. <laughs> Like, I, I mean, I don't know. They were like really, really, really being careful not to upset the five or six people who really like this film series. And like, we don't want to do a Diamonds Are Forever kind of thing where we have somebody else play James Bond in the middle of two films, you know? So like, that's what they do. Like, they're like, we don't want to release a sequel that has Treach as Wesley Snipes' character and then make another movie with Wesley Snipes and he comes back as this character. And the consensus was no one cares. We should definitely keep tabs on that for continuity purposes. So how did these do in the box office, I wonder? Uh, well, they both were direct-to-video. So if that gives you any idea of how much they made in the box office. That's what um, I was getting at. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were actually asking. Like, no. <laughs> I wonder how these two did in the box office. I'm going to say not good because there's not an Art of War 4. But then again, this film didn't do good in the box office. And there was an Art of War 2 and 3. What's funny is um, this the Art of War 2 technically has a higher Rotten Tomato score than the first one. It's got a 17% compared to the 16% this <laughs> one. Has. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and Art of War 3 is in Pathfinder territory. We're talking 10% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 3 out of 10 on IMDb. Um, whoa. Yeah, I mean, at that point, it's like you've seen the first one. The only people who are seeing the second one are people who like the first one. And then you filter it down more. And the only people that are seeing the third one are the people that like the first and second one. Yeah. And so what? That is a bizarre concentration. Yeah. And like I said, it's it's I really don't know. This one's, quote unquote, the most successful of the three of them. The only one that came out in theaters the other two were direct to video this one didn't even make its money back so but yeah that's all i got for trivia i mean like i said there wasn't a whole lot on this film that wasn't already covered in tom's meta like a lot of the trivia i was looking up i knew was going to be in the meta and i couldn't really find much anything else they're supposed to take place in hong kong but filmed in canada uh you know <laughs> um but that's really all i got for trivia guys i've got nothing else uh just absolute Nothing else. And so since we already know that everyone hated this film, I'm curious about our expectations. So, Josh, what are you expecting to get out of this film tonight? Can't be much. Well, I think out of the three of us, um, I am the only one who's actually seen this movie. And <clears throat> I can tell you this much. I have no memory of this movie except the fact that I have seen this movie. It's memorable. Yeah. Um. I think I remember one scene out of this movie, but I remember watching it in 2000 when it came out on video, me and my dad chilling out in the living room watching it. I don't remember anything else beyond that. I remember thinking it was dumb then. <laughs> Honestly, I'm expecting Pathfinder levels of bad tonight. Um, this was the movie I've been dreading. This this is definitely the movie I've been dreading. I am just, I'm already broken. I'm already broken. <laughs> Damn, we haven't even started the reel yet. Oh my yeah. God. So uh, that's... This is going to be short. I mean, we got an hour and 40 minute episode last week. So you guys should be thankful because we're taking it out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, what are you hoping to get out of this one? A gateway to aliens. I'm not lying when I said I needed Michael Bean. That's why I, <laughs> this movie's on this list. Means to an end. Yeah, I really wanted to do Cameron's two big sequels as the last two films of my... um of the journey terminator 2 and aliens and i needed a connector from mortal Kombat to aliens and god curse me i found one <laughs> so that's pretty much it i'm not expecting anything out of this film i mean uh 16 on rotten tomatoes i'm i'm not lying i'm expecting this to be i'm expecting it to be a very good episode to record a very fun episode to record and our audience is going to love to listen to this episode we are going to hate watching this film this is going to be another Pathfinder or Dead Calm or Swashbuckler. Um, I don't think I don't think this is going to be very good. And if if it, it surprises me, 
I'll gladly eat my words at the end of this show, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to be going hungry tonight, gentlemen, because uh, I think this movie's going to suck. It just, just nothing about it seems interesting. Even the other bad movies that we've watched, like there's something interesting about the film that I could probably latch on to. You know, Mortal Kombat. It's not a good film, but you know, it was about a video game series I love, and the fights were pretty cool, so I can latch on to that. Highlander was cheesy, but you know, interesting, had a decent universe that they were trying to build. And Clancy Brown is always amazing, but Clancy Brown was also in Pathfinder. So <laughs> she's not always a savior. I, I don't know. I'm not expecting much. Uh, what about you, Tom? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what to expect. Well, I know I'm going to expect a bad film. I just don't know how bad this is going to be. I do remember... Some of the previews for this film, at least I thought I did. Then I looked at the previews again. It's like, oh, I was thinking of U.S. Marshals because the plots are generally about the same. Someone is framed for something and they have to prove their innocence. I mean, this is essentially the fugitive with Wesley Snipes. And I can't remember who was the star of U.S. Marshals, except that it had um, Wesley Snipes. Was Wesley Snipes in um, U.S. Marshals? Yeah, he's really? the, yeah he's the bad he's the, he's he's playing the 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 Harrison Ford character in that one. Not the same guy, but uh, the same kind of situation. The guy's framed for murder for a crime he didn't commit and is trying to clear his name. Oh my God! He just remade U.S. Marshals. Oh dear God! I saw most of U.S. Marshals. I thought this is bad. This is just bad. Okay. I kind of know the level of bad I'm getting into. It's going to be 2000s bland. Oy vey. It didn't even make number one. Not even for a weekend. My God. Mm -hmm. And if Wesley Snipes at peak Wesley Snipes couldn't be number one on a weekend with a film. What? No, it's going to be. He couldn't. He couldn't be a movie that was basically fan service. Like bring it on is just really famous because it's got two of the hottest chicks at the time in their underwear in a scene, you know, and doing Mm -hmm. cheerleader moves later on in the movie and being hot. And that's, that's what it was marketed as. Yeah. I'm just saying, but it was entertaining at least. And I I got nothing else. So so I think we can go into our merge thoughts now, but I'm expecting it's not going to be the worst film we've seen. Well, technically it's going to be the worst film we've seen on this journey, but it's not going to be the worst film we've seen it's not going to be offensively bad or just filthy disgusting pathfinder bad Mm -hmm. if dan you were saying you were expecting it's going to be about as bad as swashbuckler i don't think it's going to be that as bad as swashbuckler just because i was going into swashbuckler thinking it would be at least entertaining and it disappointed me i know i'm not going to be entertained by this film yeah i know i got when i first looked up this movie i got it confused with another movie that Wesley Snipes and Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa were in was called Rising Sun. And that was the movie that also had Sean Connery in it where they played a couple, I think, spies or someone that gets caught up in like a thing in Japan. So I thought it was that movie. And then when I started looking up this movie, I was like, wait, this isn't Rising Sun. This isn't a good film. Um, (laughs) Why couldn't we watch that one, though? We need a Michael Bean. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But when we get to Aliens next week, you'll thank me. Um, I I guess... Oh, go ahead. Dan. I, well, I guess I, maybe just to see. It, I don't think this. I still don't think it's going to save this film. I don't think it's going to be that good. But it will be interesting to see a pre nine eleven spy movie again. Yeah, because it, it's that post Cold War kind of weirdness where they were they were using like Asia, like Southeast Asia is kind of the bad guys, like either the Chinese or or like gangs like the Triads or the Yakuza or whatever, like as bad guys before they decided, oh no, we just need to go a little further north. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And our bad guys are there, <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm kind of interesting, like seeing a pre 2000 or pre 911 spy film. So maybe that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it come off to anybody else to you like Wesley Snipes? When you really start thinking about his roles, he's kind of like like Casper Van Dien in that regard, except has like one or two more roles than he does that was memorable. He had a little bit more staying power than Casper Van Dien. I just think his his star when his star burnt out, it burnt out hard. Yeah, yeah. I because think I'm just trying to think of all the movies. I loved him in Demolition Man. I loved him in Blade. 
I really can't think of very many movies after that that he was in. Oh, he's great in Major League as Willie Mays Hayes. Um, mm. It actually showed his comedic chops in uh, Major League. I really like Pastor 57. Love him in Demolition Man. I love him in Demolition Man. I loved him in Demolition Man. Yeah, he steals that movie. Yeah, he, he really also, does. He he's really been a couple does. Comedies too. He was pretty funny in To Wong Fu. Thanks for oh, yeah, doing that one, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, his action films in the two thousands. Maybe it um, stems from you know trying to pay the tax man, and he was just like. Uh, I don't really want to do this, but I kind of need to do well, this. Well, yes and no. Some of it was the tax man, but a lot of it was um, him and Steven Seagal actually have kind of similar career trajectories in that uh, once they got famous, they got they got that moniker of, quote, difficult to work with. Yeah. You should really read or listen to Ryan Reynolds talk about the shit he did on Blade 3. Oh, yeah. He does. He would only film close ups. Like most of that movie, Blade Three, most of any far away shot you see of Wesley Snipes, like that's more than five or six feet away, is a stunt double or his body double. It, it's hardly him in the film. Uh, he would only do close ups, only filmed fight scenes, would tell other actors and actresses on set, like, call me Blade. Even when he's not in character, you had to call him Blade and stuff like that. So it's just like, okay, Blade. <laughs> you know? So yeah. It became very difficult to work, not to the same degree as Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal became a complete train wreck, but um, Snipes became very difficult to work with, and therefore the bigger roles stopped coming. He stopped getting the Passenger 57s and the Demolition Men. He stopped being able to act alongside actors like Stallone and Connery and uh, those guys and started acting alongside, well, basically nobodies. Not quite to this extent, because there's some na named actors in this film, but like after this, his, his plane kind of went... Bam. Yeah. 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 I just, I don't know. At least from this one, we'll get some good fight scenes. That's one good thing about Snipes. I mean, the dude knows how to fight. Yeah. He does have his like black belt and shit. So he is yeah. an accomplished fighter. And I oh, did yeah. hear I, one of the few positives I could find of this film where the action scenes are really cool. So I just, I guess, unfortunately, it was like one of those things. It's like there, there needed to be more of them. I don't know. I don't have much else. Uh, Segway, maybe? Yeah, I don't really well, have just, anything else to merge. I was on just this thinking one. I was just thinking before we begin our punishment, we should let Josh dole out his punishment because he quote unquote won last week. So Josh gets to do the quiz for the first time in like eight episodes. I know. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> the and king I'm has returned. That wasn't a very good segue. I apologize for that. It's all good. It's all good. This isn't a very good movie. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, what we need to do is like, why, why don't we figure out who gets to, or uh, somebody say something like, let's see what other people <laughs> thought of this film. And I'll be like, who go, or who's giving the quiz this week? And I'll be like, not me. Like, wait, shit. Okay. Um, hang on. I'm going to see this. So, so speaking of shit, uh, I wonder if Josh has, damn it. I'm okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, so, Speaking of diminishing returns, I think Josh has quiz today, doesn't he? No, that's not right either. Dan, you do it again. I I can't. I'm off my game. Speaking that's of difficult, that's just <laughs> speaking of difficult to work with. Uh, <laughs> Josh has quiz this week. What? No, I don't. <clears throat> oh shit! Yeah, you won, buddy. <laughs> yeah, one air quotes. <sighs> Fine, fine. So uh, I guess we get to go through and see what other people thought of this film. Spoiler alert, they didn't. But uh, let's say uh, I'm going to go alphabetically tonight, and I'm going to let Dan go first. But what we're doing is we're doing our standard uh, IMDb quiz. Uh, I'm going to read a review or a line from a review, and then you guys are going to guess on a 1 to 10 rating what that person gave this movie. Whoever gets closest gets the point, unless you're even distance apart, in which case the one who gets closest without going over gets it. Um, that only accounts when you're even distance apart. Um, if you get it right on the money, in other words, if it's a 5 out of 10 and you say 5 out of 10, you get 2 points. You can't pick the same number as the other guy. So uh, good luck, and may the worst one win. I was born ready. Wait, that's from Blade 3. <laughs> All right, so I have something interesting on this one. Nothing over the top, but uh, I found particular lines and reviews where the next line was pretty uh, insightful. So I'm not going to read that until after you guys give your review. So 
Dan, to you. Okay. Eminem Poe 8 said in September of 2003, Ever seen a movie you thought was going to be bad, and after watching it, you were surprised how much you liked it? Um, yes, I have, but I don't think it's going to be this film. But I will say 6 out of 10. Thompson? You say 6? Um, I'm going to say 4 out of 10. The next line was, this is not one of those movies. <laughs> it was a one star, so Tom I, then points to you. I, I knew it was going to be a pretty darn low one. So good job on that one, Tom. So now, this one's to you, Tom. KBen-Israel4 said in February of 2001, I thought this movie would barely be a good way to pass a lazy evening due to the low rating and all of the bashing that this movie received. I, I hear the but. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether they're going to say, but boy, did this movie suck, or but boy, did this exceed my expectations. I'm going to favor the latter and say this is a eight star. Nigel? I'm going to say another six. The next line is, I was extremely surprised on how excellent this movie actually is. That was a 10 star review. No, that was a 10 star. Okay. <laughs> I'm winning. Yay. I'm winning. <laughs> yeah, Tom, dude, none. Nigel, to you. This All is right. from Nims 197516. He said in June of 2018, there are people when giving their view and rating of this film have given it 7, 8, 9, and 10 out of 10. Uh. <laughs> Can you use that in a sentence, sir? Uh, uh, five out of ten. No, yeah, five. I'm going to go say, yeah, five. Thompson? I'm going to say this is another one-star review. Well, the next line was, I personally give it a ten out of ten, but those scores are also good. It was a ten-star review. Ten Dan, that, that, that points to you. <laughs> wow. That was the most backhanded ten-star review I've ever seen in my life. Like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I saved this other line from his that I almost used. The follow-up line was terrible, so I ended up not going with it. Oh. <laughs> but it's like, this is an awesome film, and those who underrate it are dickheads, and those who give it a 7, 8, 9, and 10 out of 10 are people who know what an awesome thriller is, what it should have, and so on. Wesley, stop using the internet! That's exactly the joke I thought of. <laughs> so, Tom, fourth questions to you. <laughs> Linga underscore 0429 said in April of 2006 basically a simple murder story but the film elevated and exaggerated it to a great extent without any meaningful and worthwhile goals seven <laughs> three the next line was there's plenty of action but none other than useless crap this was a one star review that's yours <laughs> Damn it, I was doing so well in the beginning, too. I'm not trying to tank this, honestly. No, like, that, that, that definitely just had the makings of a bad review. That's why I said three. I didn't think it'd be a one, but okay. All right, so, Dan, last question. A underscore K underscore 4223 said in March of 2002. This is, I'm going to struggle reading this one because, um, yeah. After all, this movie should be a lesson to Mr. Snipes, and I hope it would be his baddest. Okay. That was a full right. sentence. Yeah, okay. So just because you can put words side by side together and possibly use punctuation doesn't mean you actually made a sentence. <sighs> can you read that one again, please? I didn't understand it. Really? And can you do it? <laughs> just do it in English. Don't put it through Google Translate. Okay, okay. <sighs> After all, this movie should be a lesson to Mr. Snipes, and I hope it would be his baddest. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, uh, two. Thompson? Five. The next line was, from now on, the letter could only be going up. That was a two-star review. <laughs> Dear God, they need to vet their bots before they let them online. No, so did Dan score, win? Yeah, Dan is four to two. <laughs> Dan's got quiz next week. I knew I should have went with two. So I won, I won? You won. Or lost, depending on how you look at it. I think I'd rather go film Art of War 4. <laughs> You guys want to hear the tiebreaker? Yes. Yeah. Omega 12 said in October of 2000, for those who don't feel like reading my whole review, here's what I thought. Entertaining, some cool moments, but slightly confusing. Hey, this one's to me first. This one would have been to you, Dan. Tom. I'm going to say eight. I'm going to say seven. 
Dan would have got it on the money. That was a seven star review. His damn. next line was nothing groundbreaking. Damn, damn. Dan was on fire tonight. Yeah, no. Well, I had it in the beginning. I was coming out pretty strong, but I just did not go the distance. What can I say? I just have a gift when it comes to really shitty movie reviews from IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> when we get more of a fan base, we need them to go through and, you know, right. figure out our scores from movies past. But yeah, until then. I uh I gotta say Tom played the music. <laughs> All right, shh. Okay. Welcome back to another espionage episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and infiltration expert, Tom. Now get into this building first we're going to need to break in through the basement then sneak through the air duct system scale the elevator shafts to the roof rappel back down to the patio then use the key hidden under the mat to unlock the front door now remember time is a factor but thank you for infiltrating another exciting episode with us here at the fire pit the team is rappelling down buildings and leading the chase as they ramp up the final leg of their vacation to termination. Just two more films left, then they get to kick it on the beach with some Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Mmm, he can feel that 90s robot apocalypse already. But speaking of hot times in the nuclear wastelands, let's see how the team is handling their own hot situations on their end. We've been running for what feels like an hour. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I have. Oh god. Can't catch my breath. I haven't run like this. I haven't run like this since, oh, since Academy. Oh god. Oh come on, you pussies. You can't run five steps without losing your breath. Oh jeez. Okay. I think we're pretty deep inside this underwater drainage system now. I th- I think we've I think we've lost them. Yeah, good call on this, Tom. I haven't heard them in a bit. Wait. Have we been here before? I don't think I have. Oh shit. No, that's them. We need to go. Come on. Alright, you apes, you wanna live forever? Keep it down. Wait, what was that? Shit, no, they're gaining. No, no, no what was that he said? Go, go, what, go, Tom, go. what was that thing you said? Don't worry about that. Move, 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 move. But I need to know. It sounds so run, familiar. Run, run, run. Guys, 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 there's a light. Hopefully it's an exit. Let's go, come on. Say that again. Yeah, something about a fight? No. God, a light. Exit, ahead. Yeah, I can't understand a word that you're saying, dude. Nah, Josh just sucks at giving directions. No, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <sighs> Where'd you hear that from? No time. There they are! Shit, go, 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 go! Okay, stop, stop, stop! God damn it, Tom! Why didn't you tell us about the 300 foot drop? I never said I've been here. Guys, we're gonna have to jump. Oh, for luck's sake. Wait, why is this oddly familiar? Put that gun down! Put that gun down now! Hands up, over the head! Seriously, this isn't ringing bells for anyone. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. Oh, that's it, the fugitive. They're escaping. Judges are going to award any points for that landing. Ooh. But if you have some destination recommendations that you think will land, or if you want to land some money in our bank accounts in exchange for some advertisement space, or if you just want to land some movie knowledge on our heads, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line as well as the reason for your email, whether it's for an ad, an idea for a movie journey, 
some additional thoughts that you've had on a movie we've reviewed, and send it our way. From there, we'll read it, send it on a secret mission to a foreign land, direct it to unearth a seedy political conspiracy set to destabilize the world economy, and never respond. Turns out, uh, we kind of owe a lot of back taxes, so we won't be responding to any emails for a long time. Get it? Because Wesley Snipes went to jail for tax evasion? That, that was a Wesley Snipes dig. Look, we work with what we got. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Okay, we've made it to the roof. Now it's time to rappel down and... Wait, were you supposed to bring the rope, or was I supposed to bring the rope? I gotta go sneak back through the building to get the rope. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. <sighs> back through the air ducks again. What is this, a Die Hard sketch? Oi, hey. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. God damn it, the movie's starting now. Oh god, even the title card is bad. I know, what are we watching already? I think the only way I can make myself feel worse is if I go drink another White Claw. It's a star-studded event, typical of the man they call the Donald Trump of Asia, David Chan. Oh, the Donald oh, Trump oh, of oh, Asia. Oh, oh, that is not a compliment. That has not aged well, oh. I'm experiencing the moment. He's gonna experience a Chinese labor camp moment if he doesn't stick the schedule. That line was ad-libbed. I'm just trying to add something to this movie. <laughs> I'm having a full five minutes into it. We're all like, oh God, <laughs> this is so bad. A lot of American companies would love unrestricted access to China. Well, we see this as a major shift in economic powers. Oh, it'll happen. Ask Blizzard. I <laughs> You know, you could have, you could have, I don't know, asked him questions, interrogated him, who sent you, why are they after me? But, you know, that's fine. Tom, 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 the movie only works if you don't overthink it. <laughs> yes. You know where I always think of when I watch these chase scenes in movies? What's that? Where are the cops? Like, every time there's these big chase scenes in movies, like, where are the cops? Pulling someone over for going 37 in a 35 zone. <laughs> Probably. So that's totally Michael Bane. Bean, bone, bang, boom. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah. Bean, <laughs> bang. What am I saying? What? 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 Wait. No, seriously, what? What is. What? Um, what? 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 <laughs> Holy, what in what? the Ray learning Jedi powers in Act 2 is going on? He just knows what, what, what and, oh my god. Like how would, I, I'm, I, what? I just don't, I'm, Beans. I'm turning on Star Trek Online, I'm done with this film. <laughs> if this film isn't gonna give a shit enough for me to fucking follow it along without this lazy ass fucking writing, then I'm not gonna give a shit to watch it. Ah, Capella? I hate this movie. <laughs> Strip. All your clothes off. You think I'm gonna get undressed for you? You're bugged! There's a transmitter in your clothing somewhere. You know, Mr. Snipes, I couldn't help but notice that you're wearing a jacket you could have offered her. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same damn thing. But then Wesley Snipes wouldn't have a black leather jacket on. Oh, yeah. That's you're right. You're, that's a plot hole we couldn't have lived without, so you're yeah. right. You're, that's, yeah, think. You're right. My mistake. All right, you guys are going to need to change the uh, version to the one hour, two minute one. There's an hour and two minutes left in this. Oh, my God. You know, I read a book once about these prisoners of war who construct the house of their dreams in their head to keep their sanity. Yeah, sanity. I thought you lost that a long time ago. What is going on? I have um, no idea. Like, what is this dialogue? So... I'm just going to point this out. He had to break into the place to get to the top floor of the place to able to rappel down 
to that level. It would have been easier for him to take the stairs up. Tom, Tom, Dan. the movie only works if you don't overthink it. You'll be able to hear me with this. I can put that in myself, you know. You're going to need to take your clothes off again, though. Why? I just want to see if you do it. And when you come out, there's one more thing that I want you to do for me. One more thing. One more thing! Anyone remember the Jackie Chan cartoon? Racist. You're behind all this. With just enough help from David Chan to keep everyone guessing. I don't understand. That is the only line in this entire film that's made any sense. I don't understand what's going on. We could always stop it ourselves, you know. Just push the stop button, Josh. You can end this now. We must not impugn the integrity of this podcast. A pri Where's the Primus is coming to kill us? <laughs> Curse us in our professionalism. We get to watch Aliens next week. We get to watch Aliens next week. We get to watch Aliens next week. We to watch <laughs> Josh's aliens next mantra. Week. Well, I have a proposition for you. First, I'm going to need you to take off all your clothes. <laughs> we are getting mileage out of that one. How does it feel to be a puppet without the strings? What? That 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 was your line? You couldn't think of anything better than that. I hate this movie. But first we're gonna have a short class in Pacific Rim social economics. Oh, is this gonna yeah, have Pacific Kai Rim? Is this gonna have Kaiju? Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm on board I'm if interested. there's a Yeah, I'm on board if there's like a Kaiju and a Jaeger fight at the end of this film. I'll be okay if that what if that's what happens. Spoiler. It didn't. Oh my god, just fucking end already! For the love of god! It absolutely will not stop! <laughs> that isn't a very big bomb. But this movie is. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. Let's get this over with. That's what she said. Yeah, and getting this over with, um, we must do this now. So I think it goes to you, Tom. All right. So uh, that was the art of war. And I'm so glad Sun Tzu has been dead for thousands of years. Because I think you would have words with the creators of this film. So I'm going to preface this before I start into my final thoughts. It is going into three in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. I am just about finished with my second 20 ounce of Starbucks dark roast coffee. And I might go into my third because I do not want to risk this movie coming into my dreams and me having to suffer through this goddamn waste of space of a movie. You guys were right. This is Swashbuckler. This is a movie I had expectations for and it so obliterated them with how Bad it was. I Only this time, I was expecting at least a mediocre film. Maybe boring. But what the hell? 2000s Hollywood. They tried so hard to make this film a thriller. And didn't know how to make it a watchable film. I'm going to start with the pacing, and I will add to whatever you guys have to say. This movie felt like it had to have some kind of impactful, dramatic, oh my god, what's happening, thriller, like, twist every seven minutes so no one would, like, get bored and play with their cell phones. Only this was made in 2000s. They didn't have cell phones back then. Well, they didn't have smartphones. Was this made on Adderall and cocaine? Because there was no flow, or at least not a steady flow. I haven't been this frustratedly pissed off at a film since Swashbuckler. Oh my 
God, this was incompetent buffoonery. This was clown shoes with a soundtrack. Fuck a doodle do. Dan, how did you enjoy this film? I hate this movie. And I'm gonna be I and I'm gonna I'm going to be apologizing for it for a long time. But but I do hope that getting to watch Aliens next week kind of makes up for it. Um Oh God. Oh God. Like I had a feeling this movie was gonna be bad. I knew when I picked it, when I when I put it on my list, because I'm like, I need Michael Bean. And um Oh God. Uh just really really bad film and um i'm just incredibly disappointed in myself for (laughs) forcing michael bean so i could get the aliens (laughs) because this was so bad i i i i I thought the movie was gonna be bad i and did I find I'm gonna call I'm calling bullshit on that 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> There's no way that 16% of all critics like this film or thought something positive about it. Fuck that. It's gotta be like a zero. Cause this this was really terrible. It just tried so hard to be so intense, and yet it just was not at all. I don't know. And and then honestly, the movie completely lost me after the whole bullshit. He walks in on one of his partners had been killed. And he recreates the crime scene in his head with her getting smashed in the glass. And then out of nowhere, he sees her or he he thinks of her taking that floppy disk out of her pocket and handing it to one who hands it to the other guy who flees out the window. And the other guy stays behind to get killed by Wesley Snipes. Like, how would he have figured that out? How are you privy to flashbacks you weren't there for? I just so dumb and just lazy writing and just broken fucking film just a broken fucking movie um yeah i haven't wondered about what the hell was going on in the pacing of a film since swashbuckler just or even dead calm like this is just nothing a whole lot of this movie had a whole lot of camera cuts for nothing happening so i'm just gonna end it before i continue to ramble and rant i fucking hate this film so um josh Yes. Okay. Yes. No, it's like, uh, you know, we give Tom a lot of shit for giving us movies like Swashbuckler and Dead Calm and more recently The Greatest. Dan, when you picked them. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. You. I know. You definitely. You, you, Tom picks the ones where they talk about killing children. You just full on Anakin Skywalkered us here. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and you were happy about it. I was not happy. I wonder, does it, does any of this no, sound no, happy? No, stop. That's just saying you would like it, 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 metaphor, metaphor, layers. I'm just saying it's just like one of those things. <laughs> you weren't happy about the movie, but I mean, in the metaphor, you were happy about killing children in front of us. That's how bad it was. No, no, he he's lamenting to Pat. He's lamenting. Like, I killed them all. Now. But I'm just saying, if this was like. It only would make it worse, like if he was remorseful about killing children, you could have a little sympathy for the character, but he wasn't. He's just it's pure evil. Not you, but you know. I hate this movie. <laughs> this movie's bad. Like, and then I the one thing I couldn't get over, especially early on in this film, was why why the director wanted all of the like action crotch shots. <laughs> right. Anytime something action-y was happening, he zoomed in hard on their crotches. Like, you couldn't see anything else. It was like movement and action. But Wesley Snipes, Michael Bean, crotches. (laughs) I just... I haven't had this much trouble trying to stay awake from a movie in a long time. This movie was oh probably worse than Pathfinder. It hurt to watch. I am struggling to stay awake right now. <laughs> and that is only compounded by the fact I just watched The Art of War. <laughs> I made a joke in my head earlier tonight. I'm going to call this The Fart of War. <laughs> I am unironically saying that now. <laughs> this movie, I had no expectations for this movie. And yet it somehow let me down. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. That's pretty good. I say your joke about this being called the fart of war. You put more thought into that joke than anyone did in making this movie. I'll yes. at least I'll give you that much, Josh. Because I thought about it for about 15 seconds. And that was more time spent than anyone on this movie. Yeah. I think that's all I've got for my thoughts. I guess we could bleed have profusely into our group discussion. I mean, I will I'll say this before we continue into the group discussion. Dan, you flagellate yourself a bit. Keep in mind my Sink or Swim Summer Tour gave us both Swashbuckler and Dead Calm. Uh, so I think I've still got one up on you in terms of cinema sins. Okay, and I will say out of all of my lists that I've ever presented and have we have gone with in one, my batting average is still pretty high. It is. You are definitely, like, given the amount of lists that we've selected of yours. Yeah. But it's just like one of those things. It's, it's just... I always have this mentality about like, I am not a, I, when I was growing up, I wasn't a bad kid. Like I followed the rules. I did the stuff, but when I fucked up, I fucked up bad. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's, I'm owning this for sure. Yeah. And I'm just saying that that feels like this level. Like, like I, I, I remember one time. I don't remember where I was going with that joke. This movie broke me. <laughs> So, guys, um, at what point in the movie do you think people started walking out of the theaters and demanding their money back? Right around the time he had the flashback of things he wasn't privy to. Yo, you think it was that late in the film, Josh? When, at what point were you just like, if I was not watching this for a podcast and I would be leaving my soldiers behind if I abandoned them here, I would abandon them here. I was kind of excited when the movie ended and it was only halfway through. And then I was just depressed when I realized that we still had half the movie to go. More than half. It wasn't a whole other hour yeah, left. Yeah, but I would have to agree with Dan. I think that was about the part where, like, we started going, what? What, what? Yeah, because, like, honestly, up until that particular moment when he, like, he, he turned on detective vision and, and recreated the crime scene and then just suddenly knew everything... I was I don't want to say I was enjoying the film, but at like the very beginning of it, I'm like, OK, it's got cheesy early 2000s, late 90s special effects. Check uh, convoluted uh, uh, spy plot. Check dialogue that thinks it's clever, more clever than it actually is. Check. Maybe I won't hate this film. Yeah, no, that as soon as he did the whole detective vision thing, I started to fucking hate this movie. I'm like, that is so fucking lazy. That whole scene. And then the rest of the movie after that was just like one. What the hell's going on after another? Yeah. Well, see, for me, it, it was right at the beginning with the whole green screen, him being on top of the skyscraper, repelling into break. And that scene was straight out of a Hitman video game. Because there is, there is a, uh, the most recent Hitman video game has him rappelling down and coming into a party to infiltrate like he did in this movie. Only that looked good. So that was like, that's clearly a green screen filmed in Los Angeles. Wow. And the falls they took. Oh my Christ, God, yeah. Christ, are, there are no kneecaps left. Seven story falls. Batman would do that in the dark night because he knew it wouldn't kill them, but it would fuck them up. Christ. You know what? I want to, I want to redo my answer on that one. I know exactly when I stopped caring about this movie, when they tried to hide the fact it was Michael Bean, when during the chase sequence, you know, of the epic falls there, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they tried to make that a whole like plot twist, but it's like, I saw that as soon as he was chasing. Me. I was like, "That's that's Michael Bean." Are they trying to hide this fact? That's going to be the twist at the end, isn't it? And yeah, I just I knew like that was the most untwisty twist I've ever seen in my life. The whole like you're not making this any less or any more obvious that it's going to be Michael Bean's going to be the, end up being the bad guy in this. Like the whole being killed off screen and the whole painfully obvious. I don't know. Like as a pro wrestling fan, I've never seen a heel turn more blatant in my life. So it was just awful, awful. I hate this film. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I can see the writing, the guy that wrote this after the primary script, or I have to look up this guy's name. I, 
if only so I can call him out for the sins he has committed here. Simon Barry, I can see him going through the script that Wayne had written. Like it's like okay, dialogue, dialogue. Yeah, there's too much talk. Oh, we need a twist here. And oh, it's all about you know really sticking it to China. Ooh. Um, should I have any character do anything smart or make sense? No, no one's going to care. It's Wesley Snipes. It's going to be awesome. Kick punch. Woo. And we'll have gun food fighting at the end. I, I think I might have a mild concussion. Like I said, I just, I, yeah, this movie was bad and Josh is right. My batting average is pretty good on my list, but boy, was this an epic fuck up. <laughs> this one was epic. Um, uh, I look, I look forward to not having a list chosen for the next three journeys. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is the new Tom now. I mean, yeah, when Dan picks a movie we don't like, he picks them. And we had um, of your movies, there's this one. And then there, oh, now I'm blanking on the John Wayne one. Um, oh, the shootest. the shootest. Yeah, that one was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, sorry, you mean True Grit. No, you no, were the True only Grit one. True Grit was watchable. I, I'd watched the, the <laughs> That's classic the True joke. Grit. Oh, it's three in the morning, Josh. And we just came out of a train wreck of a movie. Yeah. We could be forgiven. Oh, dear. Mercy, God. Oh. Two, 2000s films were just the worst. Everything before The Matrix and then after. Yeah, and then you could see The Matrix's influence on this film for no fucking reason. Yeah. Did this movie come out before The Matrix? Matrix was 99. This was the next year. Oh, they probably added really? that shit as the Matrix was coming. I was like, "Ooh, we could add that to our film." That explains the bullet time bullshit at the end. Fuck, I hate this film. So uh, that's it for tonight's show. Um, as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, pretty much anywhere you want to go and download a podcast. Uh, regular episodes are Tuesdays at six, most of the time we're a little behind but please subscribe on whatever medium you choose we really appreciate it as it uh helps us out uh, also if you would uh we appreciate a review so hop onto whatever platform you got and get throw us a five-star review and if you leave one out we'll uh or if you write one out for us we'll read it on the uh podcast so yeah we'd appreciate that and be sure to join our discord channel as well link in the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com also you can go to discord.me forward slash fire pit and you can join our discord uh channel right then and there uh you'll get notifications of new episodes even better you can engage in discussions with other fans of the show uh longtime fans like uh danielle and Tyrick thorne and rob who are always lively in the chats uh talking about uh, things with us and uh, so hop on in uh we're having a good time over there and you can also email us at curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com as mentioned by that sexy sexy person in the interspersal segment and you know you can use it if you want to send us a long message a short message a happy message or a sad message it's all up to you also, please be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in this episode's description as well. So I uh, kind of have a repeat shout out from last week, mostly because I was uh, on orders for a few days this week. But my friend Edwards, who I work with, well, he's a big movie buff. When he found out I had a podcast, it's like the next three days, he just marathoned episodes. So... We've had a uptick in downloads this week, so pretty much thanks to him. But he's he was listening to several episodes. He definitely loved my True Grit episode, my True Grit thoughts on that episode. <laughs> but no, it was uh, he, he's really been enjoying the podcast. Um, at one point, we all went out to eat, and I was driving uh, back to our uh, the hotel we were both staying at, and my wife called and. Uh, I was joking. It's like, yeah, it's like he's been listening to, he's like listening to seven episodes now. So he's like sitting in the car, you know, with the celebrity, you know, it's awesome <laughs> for him. And he's all like, yeah, but I like Dan better. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Josh's friend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, uh, he, he thoroughly enjoys the show. So shout out to him. And also, uh, shout out to uh, St. Clowns and Plex for unfortunately hosting this movie tonight. We're sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to do that to you. Please forgive us. But 
Shout out regardless for giving us no technical difficulties on the one night we wanted them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we thought they were trying to warn us about Mortal Kombat last time. No, no, no. It's like, it's no stop now because what comes afterwards, there's no turning back. Yeah. We can't stop events already in motion. Uh, special shout out to Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, thanks always for listening. Uh, special shout out to work friends today that uh, celebrated some milestone with me that I'll leave it to Tom to reveal later. And uh, so I do appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys, um, uh, the feedback. I don't, I really don't have the time to name you all, but I really do appreciate it. And a special shout out to Josh's friend for liking me better. Um, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you. And a shout out to Zencaster, the uh, platform we use to record this podcast. Uh, it's great. They are not paying us to talk about them and we don't pay them for the service. So, but we can't help but shout it out because it has saved our bacon. It's just the best recording software we ha- we can use. Again, it's free and, um, it has yet to lose an episode unlike Skype. So shout out to Zencaster. Also a shout out to Podbean for hosting the podcast, uh, including tonight's episode, which while we hated watching this film, we did love recording it. So thank you very much. It, it was a hate love recording. Mm-hmm. We we loved recording it, but that we hated that it would had to be this movie. We yeah. This was kind it. of the anti- antithesis of uh, Tango and Cash. Yes, yeah, this is the anti-Tango and Cash. Absolutely. But I want to start out by shouting out Audacity. Audacity is the editing software that I utilize every week to take all of our watching and all of our recording and all of our skits and make them nice and shiny and sound good and throw in all the sound effects that make this podcast possible. Audacity is free software, so we're not paying a dime to utilize them. And they're not paying a dime for us to give them praise, but I'm going to praise them anyways. We've been using them since the beginning, and I don't see us not using them anytime. So if you want to make your own podcast or make your own music or just record your own voice and do some fun stuff, I would definitely recommend it. And I would also like to shout out a pair of our Facebook followers, Molden and Brar, two of the many hundreds and growing who are joining us on Facebook to see what we post, keep track of episodes as they come live, see what new stuff we have in store, just random stuff that we put in there. We do appreciate it as you do keep the fire pits burning. And finally, Dan was uh, hinting at a milestone. I also want to shout out Nora who has provided us our first bit of fan art. Those that are on the Discord and are on the Facebook have seen this now. She has been so kind as to take our likenesses and immortalize them in what has to be the most accurate depiction of us watching this movie. (laughs) And that we thank you for, Nora. I will try my best to link to her Instagram and other art pages. She is a professional artist. She takes commissions for those that like who play Dungeons and Dragons and like to have their characters immortalized on paper. So give her some love if you want, because she gave us some love on this fantastic bit of art. So, Nora, thank you very much. It is appreciated beyond words yeah it really was a cool picture i mean yeah really i loved it it was awesome i saw i actually had a pretty rough day at the office yesterday and that was the first thing i saw when i came home i hadn't been able to check the the message uh facebook messages and i saw that and tom's like we have fan art and he showed i'm like oh and immediately like seriously not to sound corny or anything but immediately my troubles from the day were like gone and i'm like oh i love this picture so and yeah, if Nora's listening, it's now my desktop at work. And I was parading that picture around the office today. Like uh, my wife had just given birth to another child. Like, look at this. Look at it. We passed out cigars on Monday. We have now named it only child. <laughs> yeah, we've named it only child. I just call the picture my favorite. And I always <laughs> reference it when I'm talking to my kids. <laughs> Guys, we made it through the art of war. So where are we going next? 
Please say it's not Art of War 2. Art of War 2! We're taking Wesley Snipes to Art of War 2. Oh, fuck it. Nuke it from orbit, it's the only way. No, no, no. This movie, as bad as it was, served a purpose. And that purpose was to get me Michael Bean so we can go to Aliens next week. Yes. I'm like barely functioning, so I'm just going to do the minimum here now. Okay. <laughs> That's still more than this We go did. Aliens. <laughs> we go. Next. Game over, man. Game over. (laughs) Ha ha, Bill Paxton reference. I've been Josh. I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This production, Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. (laughs) Someone get Josh some tech support. I think he's blue screened. Nah, he just needs to be plugged into the wall and recharged for a little bit. Ha ha. Ha ha. (laughs) (laughs) Stay safe out there. And we have Wakanda promise to erase humanity by carrying our resources. For the last time, you don't pilot elevators, you push buttons. I'm just saying, Josh could listen to the schedule or at least respect it once in a shit. Tom, you landed us right in the middle of a. God damn it, Tom. What? What happened? What? Uh, uh... God damn it, Tom. Again? What the hell's up with you and killing people in this damn thing? What the hell are you talking about? I thought we were just going to... God damn it, Tom. Um, I don't think this is the right universe either, guys. Plus, all these people kind of just saw us. Yeah, I think this is a wash. Yep. Let's get out of here, then. No, 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 no. I'm driving from now on. No, it's my turn. No, it goes me, then you. For the last time, it's an elevator. You don't pilot elevators. You push buttons. Jesus, God. I really don't think these are the same guys we killed earlier. Yeah, these three look the same, but they have goatees. Goatee. Oh, what show was that from? They were bad guys if they had them goatees. Uh, uh, I had like a space journey, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I think it was, uh, I think it was Wagon Train. I don't remember no wagons in no space. Was it like, um, I was like Flash Gordon, wasn't it? I think that works. Whatever. Wow, Joan, you're really not leading into the bit now, are you? Not really. No, I don't watch sports. <laughs> Well, there's some consistencies in the universe. Cut, print, do it.